Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about frequency distributions, okay? So frequency distribution is a way to present some data. Uh, it's a statistical way to present some data. And what it does is it contains, or what it has is it contains two columns. In one column, it has um, the data. And then in the second column, it has the frequency of that data. And so frequency distributions are usually used when you have a lot of data where there's a lot of repeating data. And it's a way to simplify the data to put, you know, the data that you have and the number of times that data is present, okay? So um, we're gonna just jump right in and look at an example. And that's what I have. You see all these numbers behind me back here. I have an example and we're gonna create a, a frequency distribution for the data. Now this, the data, this data is the age of maximum yearly growth for 35 boys. So this is the age where a young boy stopped growing and it was collected for 35 people. And so here are the ages. This is the age where they hit their maximum yearly growth. When they hit that growth spurt, um, so 12, 14, 13, 14, 16, 14, 17, 18, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 12, 15, 14. You see all of these numbers, and if you look, I know it's a lot crowded off in here, but the ages go from 10, I see, is the smallest, and 18 is the biggest. So the ages go from 10 to 18. So when we create a frequency distribution, we will... Um, started off at 10 and go to 18. So I went ahead and jumped and created, started creating the frequency distribution table. Um, this would normally be one long table, but for my limited board space, I had to break it up into two sides. And so in one column, I have the age. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It continues here, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then in the other column, I'm gonna put the frequency of each of those ages. So the number of boys in each of those age categories. So now I have to go through the list and actually sort the data out. So if I go through and look for 10, I have one 10 here and I don't see any other 10s. So there is one 10 total, okay? Now I wanna go through and look for how many 11s there are. There are none in that top row. There are none in the second row. There is an 11 here. So I will mark that one 11 there. Now I wanna look for 12s. Here's a 12, one, two, three, four, five. There are five 12, so I will put five right there. Now I'm looking for 13. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven 13s. And then 14, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there are nine fourteens. 15 I wanna look for now, there are none in the top row. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I see six fifteens. Now I'm gonna look for 16. There's one here, two, three sixteens and then 17 i see one here there's one 17 here and then 18 i see one here and now i'm just going to go and this is why i like to cross through my numbers as i go through that way if i miss any i know i missed it because it doesn't have a line through it so if i go and i look through the first row they all have a line through it if i look through the second row they all have a slash through it. And if I look through the third row, oh, bam, look, I missed one. I missed an 11. Is that right? Or did I just forget to cross out? No, I missed an 11. So there are actually two 11. So that's why I like to cross out as I go. That way, if I miss any, I will know, okay? So now if I wanna look and determine how many people were in this uh, sample, I will add these numbers up. One and two is three. Three and five is eight, eight and seven is 15, 15 and nine is 24, 24 and six is 30, 30 plus three is 33, 34, 35. So there were 35, and I mentioned that at the beginning, there were 35 boys that this was collected on, but this is how you determine um, how many they are. there are total, you add them all up. If I wanted to determine which ages had the least amount of boys in it, um, you can see that 10, 
17 and 18 all had one um, boy at that age that re reached their growth spurt. So 10, which is a young age, and 17 and 18 is a really older age for a boy to reach their um, growth spurt. But this is how you would create a frequency distribution. Let me see. I think I have a couple more questions here. Nope, that's it. So this is how you would uh, create a frequency distribution using given data. And so let's look at another example. Sometimes when you have really large uh, amounts of data, um, instead of just using a regular frequency distribution, you use what's called a grouped frequency distribution. And that's basically where your data is grouped. So instead of having like the individual numbers like we had in the last example where there was 10, 11, 12, 13, Instead of having those individual numbers, you have like a group of numbers, so like a range of numbers. So like 10 to 15, 15 to 20, I mean 16 to 20, 21 to 25, and so forth. That's called a, group, a grouped frequency distribution. And so it works the same way as a regular frequency distribution, except now instead of just count one data point, you count a, a range of data points to go in that frequency category. Alrighty, so what we have here, um, I have a lot of numbers again, um, 40 numbers, these are, statistics grades from a statistics test in the class from 40 students and what we have is you can see a range of grades I see 50s 70s 80s 60s 40s so you have a range of grades and what we want to do is we want to organize the data by creating a grouped frequency distribution we want to use the classes 40 to 49 50 to 59 60 to 69 70 79 80 to 89 and 90 to 99 to create that grouped frequency distribution so I'm going to create my table. I don't know if I'll have enough room to just create one table. Let's see. Oh, I may have enough room. So basically, these will be the grades. So my these are my what we call classes. 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89. Am I going to make it? Yep, I think y'all can see it. 90 to 99. Alrighty, so those are my classes. And so here we'll have the frequency. That means how many grades in each of these categories. So we have to go through and we have to actually count the data, okay? So first I wanna figure out how many grades are between 40 and 49. So I'm just looking for a grade that starts with the four. So here's one and I'm crossing through it. That way I can go back and check in the end to see if I missed any. There are none here. I'm looking for a four. So here's a 45, that's two. And here's a 43, that's three. So there are three grades in this range of uh, scores. Now I'm looking for one that starts with the five. So 50s, 50 to 59, the 50s. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, okay? So we have six in this category. All right, now looking for the 60s. So starting with a six, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. So six in this category. All right, 70 to 79. So there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. There's a lot in that category, 11. 80 to 89, so now I'm looking for the 80. So there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine in that category, and the last category is the 90s, which is an A. One, two, three, four, Five, okay. And so remember I said there were 40 students, so one way you could do it is you could go back and look and make sure all of these have a line through it, and I think they do. Yep, we didn't miss any, and the other way you can do it is to add these all up. Three and six is nine, nine and six is 15, 15 and 11 is 26, 26 and nine is 35, 35 and five is 40. And remember I said these were for, from 40 students, okay? So this is how you would create your group frequency distribution and then you want to be able to look at it and answer some questions okay so the first thing we want to talk about is the upper limit and the lower limit for each class so again these are called classes 
the lower limit is the number that's at the bottom. So the lower limit of this first class is 40. The upper limit is the number that's at the top. So the upper limit of this first class is 49. So each of these numbers on the left are the lower limits. Each of these on the right are the upper limits. Also the class width. The class width is the width of each group. So that means how many numbers in, is, is in each of these groups. The way you find the class width, you're not going to subtract 49 minus 40. You're going to subtract these two numbers. So I would do 50 minus 40 to determine how many numbers are in that group. So if you do 40 minus 49, it looks like there are nine numbers in that group when there are actually 50 minus 40, which is 10 numbers in that group. Okay. So the class width, you subtract the lower limits. So you subtract one lower limit from the next lower limit, the one um, right before it, okay? And then the other thing is how many students um, were in the class. Again, we just did that. You add up all these numbers and that'll tell you how many um, grades or how many data points you have. And then how many pass with at least a 70? So a 70 is passing. So you wanna know how many pass with at least a 70? That would be all of these students here. So 11 plus nine, which is 20, plus five, which is 25. So 25 students pass with at least a 70, okay? And so that's how you would look at your frequency distribution and answer questions about it. So we created a frequency distribution and we answered questions about it. So these are your frequency distributions. You can have one, a regular frequency distribution or you can have a group where you have groups of numbers under the classes. And if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to reach out to me via email or to put them in the comments below. And when I get a notification, I will respond. Thank you for watching. And I hope you tune in and watch the next video, which is about histograms, stem and leaf plots, and linear polygons. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.